Uh, so the African Climate Summit uh, highlighted the opportunity and solution that the African continent offers to the um, global committee with regard to the climate change and uh, action. The COP28 uh, officially acknowledged the, uh, that the fossil fuel are the root cause of climate change. So uh, we we all know that Africa has immense resources, you know, to pursue a much less carbon intensive de development pathway than uh, most of the world. My name is Victoria Kondia Karaneshi, and people call me Shotinevi Kondi. I'm uh, currently a resident researcher in climate science at Africa Institute for Mathematical Science in Rwanda, and I'm a Togolese, as, as well as I'm also an African Climate Ambassador 2024. Basically, um, for my background, I did a PhD in physics, and I specialize in energy, climate, and environment. And uh, before that, I had a background in engineering uh, in water and sanitation, and my master's degree was in environment management. So uh, being across uh, Africa, because I started with Burkina Faso, after I was in Egypt, and then after I did my PhD between France and uh, Africa Coast, and now in Rwanda at some point, moving towards Africa and from the different regions, from the West Africa region, North Africa region, and then the East Africa region, region I've seen the impact of a climate on our society. I think this is something that has motivated me at some point to um, I'll start working more on the climate change um, sector of field in order to, to, to also contribute uh, on trying to um, erase the impact of climate on our society. It was about the United, the annual United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change Conference that people call uh, basically COP, uh, that offer uh, a, a, a strong framework for intergovernmental engagement and a consensus building on uh, uh, issues uh, to help them to keep the progress in terms of international climate policy process. And then also, it's also um, uh, a framework that um, remain uh, in terms of uh, limitation for uh, the negotiation. So the conference, um, therefore, are uh, constrained in advancing innovation, innovative action and building partnership, especially with uh, non-state actors uh, to yeah, to uh, uh, protect, yeah, productively address the climate emergency, um, and then also to um, to help uh, 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 in addressing the climate justice as well. So uh, there since has been a, a growing uh, interest among the parties uh, to. Uh, yeah, to, 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 to bring uh, 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 the climate action beyond the traditional space and then also to include um, uh, complementary space and the stakeholders. So we, to help them to understand uh, the issue of climate change and how what it's required uh, to gather an um, ambition on the part of the non-state actor and then also uh, for it to be like a forum um, beyond the um, United Nations Framework uh, a, a, a Convention on Climate Change. So African governments um, under the um, the ages of the African Union has chosen, you know, to uh, to rest, to explore uh, an avenue that work, um, the, that that the world uh, discuss climate change and then act, climate action with an African lens. So the decision to host an African climate summit was proposed to take place. Um, it was before the COP26 in 2020. And then I bet because of the COVID-19, this wasn't, uh, was not been able to, uh, to happen. And therefore um, uh, they decided uh, to, to bring it after the, um, the COP2027, uh, which happened in Egypt. And then it was uh, the, uh, His Excellency President Ruto who announced that Kenya will uh, 
offer to host our this African Climate Summit in 2023. So the summit was uh, uh, to show some kind of some, some uh, cases of African in terms of opportunity that African uh, 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 countries can have in this context of climate change, and also to also show some uh, the action that um, some countries have also um, implemented for them to be able to uh, to progress toward, towards the climate action. And uh, this, so this was uh, the purpose of the uh, climate summit. Basically, COP uh, in its full uh, na uh, name, which is uh, the Conference of Parties, so it's uh, a multilateral env uh, environmental engagement. And uh, that they, uh, they basically uh, call the maps that has been signed uh, by various uh, countries across the world. And um, this, um, uh, the, the purpose was uh, based on the, the United Nations Convention to, um, to fight ag uh, against um, the desertification that they call the, the, the UNCCD, uh, and then the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. So uh, uh, basically, um, um, there are many, many countries uh, uh, across the world meet and uh, to discuss um, um, the climate change uh, like, uh, 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 across the years, uh, the climate change impact. And then this is the reason why uh, every uh, November to December, uh, uh, you will hear the word uh, COP uh, yeah, uh, more, more, more often. So the United Nations uh, Framework Convention on Climate Change, uh, that's the, the, the name COP, is scheduled to take place um, after many other uh, important activities, including the United Nations uh, General Assembly. And then, uh, uh, so all, almost uh, the COP uh, become like um, uh, the last significant, yeah, significant uh, um, meeting of leaders across the globe, as I was saying uh, previously, and, and before the end of uh, each year. So uh, the African Climate Summit, um, uh, was uh, basically uh, to to give uh, uh, a broad uh, uh, background was to to help to strengthen African position uh, for the um, in in terms of the global uh, the, the the global action for the emission uh, to to be able to reduce the um, emission of the uh, the emission and also to find a way to um, adapt based on the climate change uh, impact so. Um, so they are the, the, the key the key the key point of the um African uh, climate summit was basically um defined to develop a paradigm um that is like uh, based on a fair equitable ecological just and then inclusion trans transition to low carbon uh, climate resilient and economic development pathway. Uh, this uh, couple with some kind of um, affordable and then uh, to be able to scale our uh, economy in Africa. And then it was a platform also to encourage um, uh, the acceleration toward the implementation of uh, the, nas the, yeah, the national uh, determ determined contribution uh, that they call the N NDCs. Uh, that our countries basically uh, report yearly, and then also the long-term low um, emission development, uh, as well as the climate resilience strategy, and also it it was another pla yeah, a platform that allowed also to develop what they call the um, African Union Climate Change and Resilient Development Strategy and Action Plan from uh, that was built from 2020, 2022 to twenty twenty two. And then it's also uh, a, a, a platform that are allowed to release what they call the Pan Africa Initiative, uh, such as the Climate for Development in Africa Initiative. Uh, so, and then it all it was also a platform to also understand how African um uh, yeah, how we can develop uh, in terms of fund uh, 
uh, uh, to 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 develop to 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 invest more in the context of the climate action, and then also to be able to also uh, em implement uh, African climate agenda. So this was basically um, the main point, a uh, key point of the uh, African so uh, Climate Summit 2023. The COP28 uh, officially acknowledged the, uh, that the fossil fuel are the root cause of climate change. And then uh, 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 they agree for uh, a phase down of the same way, uh, yeah, the, the, of, uh, of that same was a big uh, step that I wanted to mention. And then also uh, the second was, one was, um, um, that it also emphasized that there were a loss and damage found of about um, 792 million USD, but it comes short to uh, of the amount of climate uh, finance that needed uh, for the loss and damage to uh, show some uh, some kind of uh, progress. Uh, so the African Climate Summit uh, highlighted the opportunity and solution that the African continent offers to the um, global committee with regard to the climate change and uh, action. So African, um, basically uh, we know that uh, African Arab Lounge as well as uh, was like some kind of a show, um, a showcase for us to help uh, feed the global community and help uh, obtain global uh, food security. And we also know that African green um, uh, critical mineral that provide opportunity for green industrialization were brought to the um, uh, to the fore. So uh, there was a call uh, for uh, value addition of the green uh, critical uh, mineral within the um, uh, continent above to reduce the carbon footprint, uh, print, sorry, and due to the uh, possession out of the uh, continent as well as uh, uh, to create employment opportunity basically for, I can say basically for youth because as we know, Africa is uh, a young growing uh, continent. And then the opportunity for uh, carbon um, uh, passing, uh, for example, as we know that the, the, the forest of Congo is uh, somehow um, uh, 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 can help to be uh, provide as a, uh, a carbon for for the uh, in the in the context of uh, uh, of climate change. So from COP twenty eight, Africa was um, interested uh, in climate finance, and then the global stock uh, take. And as well as strengthening adaptation action, uh, operationalization of the loss and damage found. And also, they were uh, uh, also like interested basically on the just energy transition, because uh, as, as you can hear now uh, uh, from many platforms uh, talking about just energy transition, it was coming from the, um, also the, uh, from the uh, COP28. Uh, and then Africa mission to be uh, granted uh, the special need and then uh, seek constant uh, statute. However, as we know, Africa did not get all that it expected. There was some uh, uh, traction in the line Africa wanted uh, things to uh, to go. So uh, we we all know that Africa has immense resources, you know, to pursue a much less carbon intensive development pathway than uh, most of the world, we, we, we know that. And then uh, uh, it's face challenges and we do, uh, we face challenges, but basically uh, this can also be an opportunity uh, to be matched with the time, uh, yeah, the timely and then the scale right finance and technology. So with Africa Renewable Energy Sources, and then as I previously mentioned, uh, it's Arab launch. Uh, as well as its carbon uh, basin of uh, fall. Uh, if uh, properly and efficiently uh, tapped, will help the globe in the process of um, a low carbon development pathway. And then uh, we should uh, also uh, notice that the cost of capital that comes to the continent is way less than the uh, continent needs to explore its resources. So 
Again, capital and technology is what Africa needs to navigate its challenge and then opportunity around climate change and uh, act, uh, climate action. Yes, um, there should have been uh, a timeline to this. Um, the use of transitional energy to help uh, maintain energy security will make a use uh, for energy sources such as uh, climate damaging, uh, uh, yeah, you could find petroleum uh, gas acceptable. So this is not uh, ideal, we know. Uh, even though um, in uh, developing countries such as most of our cont countries in Africa, it's still a better and less uh, polluting option for home cooking and then heating uh, than um, the burning wood or other uh, biomass sources. So uh, when countries like uh, Nigeria, you know, uh, cut subsidies uh, in the uh, minds of economic crisis, um, they were navigate, yeah, they were navigate negative, I'm sorry, negative impacts. And then over, as we know, over um, 600 million people still lack electricity in Africa with various rate of access in different countries, depending on, on the countries. So African countries will suffer a big deal. And uh, should there be uh, no commitment to enable a just transition? So uh, this is uh, some kind of question we can ask ourselves. So um, I think, however, an energy transition, uh, on my opinion, is still a good idea. And it will work for Africa if, uh, we try to navigate through the just energy transition. So um, the African continent uh, holds about 30% of the world's critical uh, mineral resources alongside abundant clean energy resources, uh, including the hydro, wind, solar, and even the hydrogen that we are talking today. So that can serve as the um, foundation for clean industry, and then uh, its com commodities. So um, the energy transition also will increase the demand for um, these um, uh, vital resources and can accelerate um, yeah, investment and create employment opportunity for millions in the continent, especially for youth. Uh, however, the continent only attracts about 2% of global clean energy um, spending. So um, the push should therefore be uh, towards uh, progressing on the continent rather than, you know, exporting raw material. Also, um, I think investing in, yeah, in building more, uh, more capac capacity and yeah, expertise, you know, uh, uh, yeah, maybe as I was saying, like invest more in building more capacity and expertise in youth. For them to you know to be able to solve the technical issue that uh, we may need or we may have in this uh, energy transition pathway, Africa, as we know, is a continent with uh, the most important green transition mineral, as I just mentioned uh, in the previous uh, question, and I hold the key for a global energy transition. But yet. Even as Africa, we are yet to implement energy transition. So um, accelerating uh, uh, the acceleration of energy transition, in my view, will increase the demand for green transition, uh, minerals and in the continent and globally, which is what the globe needs for an energy uh, transition. My message to the African leaders uh, will be um, in this pathway of climate action and then a climate justice if I, or even for the energy transition. I think as I was I, I mentioned in one of my responses, it, it will be good to more invest in young people, giving them the, the capacity, the expertise to be able, you know, uh, 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 to be able to um, contribute more in this um, um, pathway for us uh, 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 um, trying to adapt or mitigate towards the climate uh, uh, change impact. Because if we give the capacity to the young people, they are the new generation, and then we all know that African 
count, uh, continent is a young growing con continent. So there it means that we are building the new generation of um, uh, 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 people negotiate that are well equipped to be able to negotiate when it comes to the uh, global uh, negotiation in, in, in the uh, context of the climate change.